Hi everybody, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. Here I have the brand new Mares Sirius Dive Computer. So the Sirius is a watch-sized dive computer with a color screen, a rechargeable battery, and this is Mares' new flagship dive computer. Right now it's available in two colors, black and silver, which is this one here, and black black. The computer itself weighs 103 grams, and the body, without the straps, measures 62 by 53 by 70. 17 millimeters and the screen itself is about 34 millimeters across. The series has a four button user interface, a MIP color display and it comes with a traditional rubber watch strap but one nice thing about this is that it's quick release or quick change so you can swap them over really easily without any tools. On the inside the series has a 200 milliamp hour rechargeable battery which is good for 500 charging size cycles and it will last upwards of 30 hours of dive time according to Mares. The Sirius uses a Bjormann ZHL16C algorithm instead of the RGBM that some of the other Mares computers use, so that's a new change to this. And the ZHL16C also has adjustable gradient factors and predictive multi-gas if you want to change your dive profile and switch gases underwater. Whilst talking about gases, the Sirius is nitrox and trimix capable, both hypoxic and normoxic, up to five gases at any one time. And each of those gases you can connect to a wireless air transmitter because the Sirius can talk to up to five wireless air transmitters. Bluetooth inside lets you connect your dive computer to the Mares app on your smart device, which lets you download dives and change the settings on your dive computer more easily. Computer itself has the memory for up to 100 dives or 100 hours, it's a little unclear there, but if you're downloading them to your phone then you don't have to worry quite as much. Sirius has a built-in digital compass to make sure that you're heading in the right direction. One new feature in the Sirius is the ceiling controlled decompression. So this is more for deeper diving and you're free to use it or not use it. You can switch it off if you don't want to. And this effectively shortens some safety stops or decompression stops by maximizing the inert gas pressure gradient in the leading tissue within the limits allowed by your low and high settings. But it can make the dive profile a bit more aggressive, so it's worth reading up on these ceiling controlled stops before turning this setting on. As a day-to-day -day wristwatch, the series has three different watch faces for you to choose from, and then you can customize the colors as well, and it comes with a wireless charging base to top up the battery between dives. Right now, the Sirius has a recommended retail price of £671, which sits in quite a nice price bracket at the lower end of color screen technical dive computers and around the same price as a lot of other large screen dive computers. So let's take a look at how it arrives and everything that you get in the box. This is how it arrives uh, in a case. I love a good case. Uh, it kind of annoys me when a dive computer just comes in like a just a cardboard box and then you just have to recycle the cardboard box. But when it comes with an actual case, you can reuse it. Uh, it has a, a recycled cardboard sleeve. Uh, thank you for choosing Mares, uh, the barcode. Uh, it does have the serial number on the back as well. So that's useful just to jot down somewhere. Um, otherwise that's about it for the sleeve. The, uh, the EVA case, it's got Sirius written on the, or, or embossed, I think is the correct term, uh, on the top. You've got one zipper and, and that's it. It's that like semi-rigid case, so it's going to protect it, but it's still a bit, it's not a rigid box. On the inside of which... We have um, some information, uh, an information card and a, um, a little QR barcode that you can scan. Uh, just information about the, uh, the computer, a, uh, a quick start guide. So these are quite handy because they kind of tell you every time you press the button, this is the screen that you're going to, um, uh, you're going to see. And these are the different settings and whatnot. So if you know you want to change a setting, but you can't remember exactly where it is in the computer, you can kind of find it on the card and then work out how to um, uh, how to find it. Um, that feels laminated as well. So yeah, you can keep that with it. Um, you get the dive computer itself. 
has one of those sticky um, protection labels on the um, uh, on the screen. Uh, the, um, the the straps attached, and then you get a um, a dry suit strap or a thick wetsuit strap. So uh, so if you're diving in colder waters, you can quickly swap them over. Foam insert. Lots of books of words. Uh, dive organizer. Um, just a fun piece of paper uh, that sends you to Myers.com. The um, uh, another book of words uh, is more about so like warranty information and whatnot, I imagine. Um, that one definitely is limited warranty information. You get a USB charging cable, and that will go to the charging mat. So because this is wireless charging, you set this up. Oh, it's stuck down. Um, you set this up. And that way you don't have to like plug anything into the computer you just sit it on top of it and that will uh, and that will recharge it and that's powered by a usb similar to a lot of um, like smart devices nowadays uh, another foam insert that you can take out uh, and then yeah you can reuse the uh, case as much as you want you've got a um, a separate mesh pouch for any accessories like your dry suit strap you can uh, you can store that separately and um, yeah if you wanted to you could put that first insert back in and then leave your computer in there so it's nice and safe uh, or you could wear it day to day um, but yeah let's take a closer look at the uh, the computer itself so the bezel feels like aluminium. Uh, now I'm not a metallurgist, um, but it does feel a little bit different compared to the more composite body of it. So it feels a little bit colder, but it doesn't feel like stainless steel. It feels a bit more like um, uh, like aluminium, which makes sense because it is still very, very light for a dive computer. It's a little chunky, uh, similar to a lot of other like technical watch sized dive computers. Uh, but yeah, this is about 17 millimeters off of the wrist and it's quite a decent size as well. So for if you've got skinny wrists uh, or if you're a female scuba diver, uh, it might be a bit chunky, but if you're okay with that, then great. But when I first put it on, yeah, you do think mm, it is a bit chunky. Four button user interface, as I mentioned. Uh, this is the screen, I believe, on its brightest setting. Uh, let me just check that quickly. So navigating it is pretty easy once you get used to it. Um, so yes, it is at the, uh, the highest setting. And they're utilizing push and hold different button presses to navigate around the dive computer. The watch strap itself, so this is a nice rubber silicone material, so nice and soft and uh, it gives you plenty of grip. But one really nice feature that I like is that it has these quick change straps, so you can unhook them really quickly and easily. So especially if you're a dry suit diver, you're wearing this day to day, but the strap itself is too short to go around your wrist with your dry suit and your undersuit. You can just take this one off, fit the dry suit one by just pushing it in and it's connected, you're ready to go. So very quick and easy, you don't need any tools or a second additional strap with two buckles. Uh, it is literally just you pull this section back, it's spring loaded and then it retracts. But when it's actually on your wrist and wrapped up, then it's it's covered and shielded so it's, it's less likely to uh, to disconnect. Two strap retainers made out of the same material, so um, so nice and soft to keep that strap in place, and a metal buckle on it as well, so that's going to hold your uh, your computer in place. So navigating it is pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Took me a moment to uh, to work out the like menu structure, but once you get your head around it, it is quite natural to uh, to navigate around it. Uh, the top left SW is your stopwatch, the stopwatch timer. Uh, so you can press that, and it uh, it goes into the uh, to the stopwatch mode, holding it back. Now, if you press the down button or the the back button here, you can cycle through the different color options, uh, which is kind of cool. But if you want to change the uh, the watch screen, then you have a few different options. I quite like this this one, which is an old like, analog watch. And if you press that, it just changes the color uh, as it goes around. Um, holding down 
the button and we're going to the compass so we can see the compass here uh, again it's a compass it's pretty easy to uh, to get your head around and from this screen if you press or if you hold down that button again and you had dives on it it would go to your previous dive which is quite nice to get to there quite quickly uh, this one coming straight out of the box doesn't have any previous dives on it so it just goes back to the uh, to the main screen but Navigating the menu, if I just hold down, and then you can cycle through pre-dive, Bluetooth information, set dive, set watch, uh, the logbook, dive planner, and it just cycles back around. Um, pre-dive, if we just go in here, so it just tells you your like vital statistics. So your main gradient factors, right now it's set to 85-85. Um, you're diving on air, and the current room temperature is 27 degrees apparently. And if you hold, you go back, and you can just change those settings if you want. Um, compass time, mode, uh, the algorithm, gas integration, if you've got um, wireless air transmitters, if you're diving multi-gas, and it, it gives you a lot of like future proofing if you um, if you aren't into technical diving you've got lots of additional settings in here that you um, that you might not use but they are useful from time to time and um, yeah there's your um, ceiling um, controlled decompression so if we just go into uh, mode quickly bottom timer so that's gauge mode single gas multi gas and it just cycles back around. Um, so it's really down to gauge mode, which is where the algorithm is effectively switched off. You have single gas, if you're just diving a single gas mix on the dive or multi-gas. Um, so we're just diving single gas. Uh, this time we're gonna dive on nitrox. Enter that, and here we can change our nitrox setting. Uh, so say we're diving on 32. Choose our PPO2, 1.4 is nice and safe, uh, and it gives you your, uh, your MOD, and then you're good to go. Uh, so yeah, navigating it. Once you get your head around the, uh, the, the overall layout and how the button works, uh, pretty simple to get, um, uh, get your head around it. One thing that I did want to note is that screen brightness, in that right now it's set to the, uh, to the brightest setting, and I don't know whether it's just because I'm here in the studio, I've got a lot of studio lights around me, doesn't seem the brightest of bright screens. Um, actually, I'm gonna put it here up against the Shearwater Terek that's also in the brightest screen mode, just so that you can see the, uh, the comparison. Um, but if I change the, um, uh, the watch settings on the Sirius, if I just set it down to the lowest setting, which is better for the battery, obviously, and if you're wearing this as a day-to-day -day watch, uh, you'll get more battery life out of it. Um, you, can, uh, you can see the difference. Now, it's not a huge difference, and after a certain amount of time, I, I haven't actually checked exactly how long it is, but the screen does naturally dim itself to go in like a, not a sleep mode, but a, a temporary mode, whereas the, the Terek will just switch the screen off. The, um, uh, the Sirius goes into a light like, dim mode, which is quite nice. So you can still read it, but it's not using up too much battery. Somebody asked if the Sirius had some of the same handy features that the Terek has. Uh, the first one being Surf GF or Surface Gradient Factor, which is where the computer basically works out what your gradient factor would be as if you were on the surface at that exact moment, uh, which the Sirius does do, but they call it GF now slash at surface, which I presume is the same thing without actually taking it diving. Uh, GTR, gas time remaining, uh, that's where the computer can work out how much gas you have left in your cylinder. In minutes it'll tell you at your current breathing rate, at the current depth you have this many minutes of breathing, um, thanks to a transmitter obviously. Sirius does have this feature, only they call it TTR or time to reserve. It calculates how much time you have before you reach 50 bar or whatever you set the reserve to. TTS or time to surface 
is on the Sirius, which uh, includes each decompression stop and the time required to travel the vertical distance to the surface at the allowed rate, but it excludes deep stops or non-obligatory deep stops. And GF99, that shows the current leading tissue inert gas supersaturation as a percentage, couldn't find this setting. Um, not to say that it won't be added at a later stage because a lot of computers today uh, you can update their firmware which is pretty cool uh, or they might just call it something different and I had a good look through the manual, I had a good look through the computer, I couldn't find this setting. Uh, another worry was about the straps themselves and fitting third party straps um, like a simple NATO strap if you are so inclined then yes you can remove the official straps and you still have these two millimeter bars they're really nice and sturdy and there's a 24 mil space across here so yes you can fit some third party like a basic nato strap uh, but yeah as always it's, it's better to just stick with the official straps and that's the Mara's Sirius dive computer. Uh, you can obviously see the similarities between this and the Shearwater Terek, uh, which makes sense. The Terek has been a hugely popular dive computer and the Sirius is very similar in both looks and features, just at a reduced price. The main differences that I could find between the two are that the Sirius doesn't have free diving nor uh, CCR modes. It has a smaller logbook memory. Sirius doesn't have vibration alarms neither, but you do have the quick change straps on the Sirius. You can also connect one extra transmitter compared to the Terek. Now, I'm not gonna do a full review of the Sirius right here as I've only just taken it out of the box, but we are going to be taking this one out to Egypt with us to see how it fares and what it's like underwater. So if you're interested, then stay tuned, subscribe to the channel here uh, for when that video drops and check out our website, scubadivermag.com and of course the magazine that we publish where that review will be printed. So let me know what you think about these series down in the comments below. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.